Hello, greetings, welcome. Uh, let's take a look at our second example problem uh, from section 2.2.1 uh, on production planning from the text. Um, and so in, in this screencast, just like the others, we will start by formulating our linear programming problem. Uh, then this screencast will end. And then in a subsequent um, screencast, we'll work out the uh, numerical solution. Right? But first our focus is just setting up the model, which we'll then solve later. Okay. And arguably setting up the problem is the most important task because without a correct model, um, there is no way to get a correct solution. Okay, So um, three products, P1, P2, and P3, are manufactured on two machines, M1 and M2. Each of the products must be processed on both machines in arbitrary order. The unit profits of the products are $18, $12, and $6 respectively. And the machine capacities are 24 and 16 hours per planning period. The table below indicates how many units of the products can be made each hour. Um, so how many units of the products can be made each hour. And we're told that in addition, it is required that at least 10 units of the second product are made. Okay, so uh, let's do it. Okay, so first things first, this is a uh, production planning um, problem. Okay, and so what we're going to need to determine is the number of units of product one, two, and three that we want to make in order to maximize our profits. Okay. So the first thing I'm going to do is okay, let's let oh, so let's let so x1 will be essentially the number of units of product one x2 will be equal to the number of units of p2, and we'll let x3 be equal to the number of units of p3. Okay, So our objective um, is to maximize profits. Okay, so in order to calculate our profits, um, we need to sum over the number of each unit um, produced times the profit per unit. Okay. So in this case, our objective function z, so our objective will give variable name z, so we're going to try and maximize uh, z. Okay. So we're going to sum over all units times the profit of um, each unit type. Okay. So if I'm making x1 units of p1, okay, from the problem statement, the net profit of a unit of um, product p1 is, is $18, okay, so next if we look at unit 2, or product 2, it's $12 per unit of product 2, Ooh. boy, my eraser is going crazy, 12x2 plus, when it comes to type 3, it was 6, right? 6x3. Okay, so again, it's um, the number of units of each product type times the profit uh, per unit of each product type. Okay. Cool, so that's our objective. Okay, and so next we need to um, try and summarize our constraints. So if I look at the problem statement, let, let's go back and look. Okay, so um, the unit profits of the products are 18, 12, and six dollars respectively. Okay, we've got that in our objective function, and then we're told the machine capacities are 24 and 16 hours per planning period. And the table below indicates how many units of the product can be made each hour. Okay, so it's important as this says the number of products that could be made each hour. Okay. So this is essentially giving us rates of um, product per hour. Okay. So what we want to know is, you know, um, how do I want to say this? So you know, if we're making say x1 uh, units of, of product one, uh, p1, then the number of time that would take on machine one would be x1 divided by three, right? Because this rate tells me I can make three products per hour, right? So in one hour, I can make three products. 
So if I were to flip it, it would give me the time, you know, so in, in one hour I can make three products, right? So we're, we're, we're flipping it, right? So it tells us, um, you know, essentially how long it takes, how long it takes to produce a unit on um, a given machine, right? So one third hour per product. Okay. So, um, yeah. So if we're limited to 24 hours and 16 hours on each machine, what that's going to tell me is if I have six hour or 24 hours to work with on machine one, given I'm making X1, X2, and X3 units of product P1, P2, and P3, I need to determine how many hours that will take and make sure that it's less than or equal to the total capacity of that machine. And I have to do the same thing um, with machine two as well, which has a capacity of 16 hours. Okay. So our first constraint is going to be related to the time capacity of our machines. Okay. So in this case, okay, let's look again. I'm going to, I'm going to want to take inverse, take the inverse, because this tells me how many products I can make per hour. Okay. So I want to flip it because I want to know, um, the number, you know, per hour, how many products I can make, because when I multiply by the number of products of that, uh, or units of that product type I'm making, um, it'll tell me how long it took to, to make those units. Right. So, um, what I mean by that? So it's going to be one third, right? Because this is units of product hour. So again, um, so I can make three products per hour or, um, in one third of an hour, I can make one product, right? Um, so I can make three products per hour, or if I flip it, I can make in one third of an hour, I can make one product unit. Okay. So this would be one third X one plus, uh, one fifth X two. plus one-tenth x3, okay, in the capacity of machine one, or the planning period is 24 hours, okay. So the total time required to make x1 units of um, product one, x2 units of product two, and x3 units of product three on machine one needs to be less than 24 hours, now, if I do the same thing on machine two, I have one sixth x one, one fourth x two, and one twelfth x three. Okay, and then these be less than or equal to sixteen hours, which is the planning period for uh, machine two. And then the last comment that's made it here is in addition, it is required that at least 10 units of the second product are made. Okay. So then the last one is we need at least 10 units of P2. So that tells me then that X2 needs to be greater than or equal to 10. Okay, so I need to have at least 10 units of, of product 2. Okay, cool. And then the very last constraint we'll add is going to be essentially our non-negativity constraint. And what it is, is we're trying to make units of product 1, 2, and 3. Um I can't make negative products, right? I can make zero units of, you know, a given product, um, but I can't make a negative number, okay? So X1, X2, and X3 have to be greater than or equal to zero, right? They have to be non-negative. And so we'll see later when we look and say Excel, um, we can check a box um, to indicate that our variables that we're solving for, you know, X1, X2, and X3 in this case, um, need to be greater than zero. Um, or if we were to define it, okay, we can you know, explicitly write it out. And I'd write it out as x1 has to be greater than or equal to 0, x2 is going to be greater than or equal to 0, and x3 will be greater than or equal to 0. Okay. 
So if we were to write out our problem then, okay, so let me insert a new page, okay. So if we were to, you know, write this out then as our, in terms of formulating our linear programming problem, okay, so we're going to try and maximize z is equal to 18x1 plus 12x2, okay, plus 6x3. So we're trying to maximize our total profit, and that'll be subject to the constraints, okay. I'm going to have one-third x1, okay, so I'm going to try and line up the variables. I'm going to say one-third x1 plus one-fifth x2, yeah, one-fifth x2, plus one-tenth x3, less than or equal to 24. Our second was one-sixth x1, plus one-fourth x2, plus one-twelfth x3, has to be less than or equal to 16. Okay, um, x2 is going to be greater than or equal to 10. And actually, so in hindsight, when I write that down, when I look at my non-negativity non-negative, um, non-negativity constraint, so since I'm already indicating that x2 has to be greater than or equal to 10, um, x2 greater than or equal to 0 really doesn't tell me anything new. Um, so there really is no need to write it down, right? We're already saying x2 is greater than or equal to 10, so it must be greater than 0. All right, so, and the other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to try and line up my variables. So I'm going to say x2 is greater than or equal to 10. Uh, x1 is greater than 0. And x3 is also greater than 0. All right, so there's the first part. There's our model uh, setup, which we will now next need to solve.